Hi God, I know it's been a while, but please, please don't let ChatGPT take my. Oh hello, didn't see you there. I was just um, relaxing. Um, so today I want to talk about will ChatGPT take our jobs, our programming, software development, software engineering job, whichever term you want to use. Will ChatGPT and artificial intelligence as a whole take them away? Stick around and I'll answer that question in this video. All right, just a quick little introduction for those who may not know me. I'm someone who pivoted from criminology to computer science about two to three years ago. And I now work at a Silicon Valley tech company as a professional software engineer. And in this channel, I basically share my journey, share important things I've learned along the way, which will hopefully save you a lot of time if you're trying to get to a similar goal. And um, yeah, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, please do like, comment and subscribe. I also answer questions all the time. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. Um, you know, DM me, whatever, I'll be more than happy to answer. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into the content. All right. So just straight up, do I think ChatGPT will replace software engineers or programmers? No, I don't think it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, I should say, say a caveat. The, all this video is, of course, just my opinion, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying any of this is uh, factual, but this is my opinion and my experience. So here's three reasons I believe it won't happen. Number one, I've used chat GPT on the job, right? And there's basically two chat GPT models that have been released so far, right? There's chat GPT three, or I believe it might be 3.5. And then there's chat GPT four. I've been, I've used both personally. So chat GPT three, let's talk about it. It's a great help, massive help, you know, and I think it's a revolutionary tool, but when I was using it, it was wrong on things often. And I don't have like exact metrics to say this is the percentage it was right, this is the percentage it was wrong, but it was wrong enough on a consistent basis to where I didn't feel confident just taking the answer it gave me and then using it. I had to, you know, take these. So it was like a point of reference is what ChatGPT was for me, or at least GPT-3. You take what it's saying, you verify it with another source through Google search or whatever, and then, you know, you feel comfortable using it. And GPT-4 is much better, you know, so significantly better but it still requires that human su supervision and hands on. By the way, I have some notes in front of me, so I'm looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, but it still requires that human supervision, that handholding. It still needs a programmer, software developer, software engineer, whatever you want to call it. It needs someone there that, you know, gives it that input, takes a look at the output, makes sure the output is satisfactory for, you know, the problem statement that you provided, and then you use it. So uh, it still requires that handholding. There's just no other way to say it. So currently, where ChatGPT is, is, you know, again, revolutionary tool, great tool, helps with productivity. And in order for it to start replacing software engineers, it has to make a massive leap and do some things, which I'm going to touch on in the next point that software engineers do on a daily basis. And I think the leap from where ChatGPT is to completely replacing software engineers is a massive leap. And the people who say that AI will replace software engineers are, I think, underestimating how big of a leap that really is. It's not just adding one or two new features to the model. It's drastic improvements to the model would need to be made for it to go from its current state to replacing software engineers. And again, I'll touch on that a little bit more in the next point. So point number two, we've yet to see it perform a real software engineering task from scratch. And here's what I mean by that. Let me give some examples of tasks that software engineers do on a daily basis you will have to add on to a huge code base, right? So there could be a massive code base, years and years old with thousands of lines of code, and you're going to have to add a feature to it or fix a bug in it. I've yet to see any example of software, uh, or excuse me, of ChatGPT taking a massive code base and being told, hey, here's all this code, add this feature to it, test it, and then give the you know, finished code back to us. I've yet to see any such examples of it doing it. Uh, similarly, I've yet to see examples uh, of it, you know, providing it a code base and saying, hey, here's this error that was reported by a client, um, you know, find where it is in the code, fix it, test it, give it back to us. Yet to see it. And yet this is, you know, something a software engineer would do on a daily basis. So one of the daily tasks ChatGPT has been unable to do, uh, at least so far. And again, I haven't seen any examples of it doing it. So next thing I want to touch on. Here's a task that, uh, you know, a software engineer would do also on a daily basis, usually a senior engineer. You look for problems in the status quo, right? So you have your current company infrastructure, you have the current web application, whatever it is, 
So a senior engineer would look at that and say, okay, I see this problem, I see that, and sometimes junior engineers as well. So then you see these problems, you identify them, and then you go ahead and fix. Again, I've seen no proof so far that ChatGPT is capable of doing this. I haven't seen any proof that ChatGPT can, you know, analyze a whole infrastructure and say, uh, you know, here's an issue I found in our internal process and here's how to fix it. Admittedly, it probably hasn't been put to the test in the sense that I'm talking about. Uh, but regardless, this is something that a software engineer would do. And we've yet to see evidence that ChatGPT is capable of doing this. Next, building a project from start to end, engaging stakeholders, testing, etc. This is another thing that a software engineer would do, you know. So you'd be assigned a project and it will be, you know, you'll be given the requirements or sometimes you'll even have to do the requirements gathering. And then, you know, you have to engage the right stakeholders. You have to do the testing, et cetera, et cetera. It's, you know, it's, this is one of the biggest responsibilities of a software engineer. And we've yet to see ChatGPT take on a task like that. So we don't know how it will perform. Uh, my opinion probably wouldn't perform too well on it right now. Uh, I don't think it's nearly refined enough to do so. And, um, you know, I'm happy to be proven wrong, but... Again, to say something like uh, ChatGPT will replace software engineers, we will need concrete evidence that can do things like this. And right now we don't have that. Next, will companies even agree to source code access? This is something I think is less of a bottleneck. I think companies probably would if they see the benefit of integrating ChatGPT. So assuming ChatGPT gets to a point where it can fully replace software engineers, another thing that would need to happen is companies would need to be willing to give uh, you know, the company, whether it's OpenAI or whoever is pro uh, providing this artificial intelligence tool, uh, they would be, need to be willing to give that company access to their personal source code, right? Now, usually companies don't release source code. It's considered like private information, right? So would companies be willing to do that? I don't know. I say if they see the cost benefit analysis and if ChatGPT really is refined enough to replace programmers, probably they would because companies at the end of the day are there to make a profit. And if they save a significant amount of money by doing so, yeah, probably they will. But it is a bottleneck to keep in mind uh, at the moment. Right now, we don't really have a clear answer on that. All right, the last thing that I want to touch on, and I think this is probably one of the most important points. Coding is the easy part of the job as a software engineer. The hard part of the job are the you know, soft skills aspect, you know, making sure everyone's on the same page, engaging the right stakeholders, um, making sure that the requirements that we've gathered are also in alignment with everyone's expectations. And, um, you know, all these things require soft skills. And are AI soft skills greater than human soft skills, at least with the evidence that we currently have? Um, I would say I'm not convinced. I would say they're not. I think with uh, human beings, of course, you know, even in your day-to-day -day job, there's a lot of emotional aspects at play. You need to know how to work with different personalities, different kind of people. It's not really just a... Like human conversation, right? It's not always a logical exchange. We know that, you know. And again, some people, you know, you have to deal with in a certain way. You have to talk with them a certain way. Um, some people, you make less eye contact, more eye contact. Uh, these are just things that, you know, are important in terms of the soft skills aspect. And these are things you do have to do as a software engineer on a daily basis, right? When you're working through a project, it's if, if someone came up to me as a software engineer and just said, here's what I want, here's the code, write the code, easiest task I've ever had. You know what I mean? What's difficult to get is engaging all the stakeholders, getting the getting the alignment, you know, and talking to them, hey, this is what you want. And then another team might be like, no, this is it might say, oh, this is actually uh, what we want. And it goes against uh, what we're doing. And this kind of, um, uh, you know, isn't consistent with what we were expecting, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The point is, there has to be a lot of good communication and good soft skills are needed for successful software engineering projects. To happen and so far I'm not convinced that artificial intelligence is capable of this so in conclusion you know I don't want to downplay ChatGPT. it is a revolutionary tool I think it's a phenomenal tool and I think it will greatly increase our productivity as software engineers and I welcome it to the industry I really do I'm happy to have this tool it's already helped me um, you know get better at my job it's helped me learn a lot of things so I welcome it I'm happy we have it. I'm just not convinced it's going to replace software engineers anytime soon. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's my opinion on the matter. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts as well. So please do drop your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll talk to you later. Peace.